again, we are watching the Amoeba Sisters. Pay attention to the animations because I'm going to reference some of the notes that we take today. Let me share my screen. DNA. We talk about it so much, it's the ultimate director for cells, and it codes for your traits. With a molecule that has a function like that, it makes sense that when you make another cell, like in cell division, you would also need to get more DNA into the new daughter cell. And that introduces our topic of DNA replication, which means making more DNA. First, let's talk about where and when. First, where. Well, if it's in a eukaryotic cell, it occurs in the nucleus. However, remember, not all cells have a nucleus, such as prokaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus. Still, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells do DNA replication, but there's some differences between the two that this clip doesn't go into. Next, when. When does this happen? Well, a cell is going to need to do this before it divides so that the new daughter cell can also get a copy of DNA. To get specific, in a eukaryotic cell, that's going to be before mitosis or meiosis in a time known as interphase. I think DNA replication would actually make a great video game. Still waiting for that to be invented. I'm going to introduce the key players in DNA replication so that you can get some background information. Now remember, these are just some major key players. There's a lot to this process. Many of the key players are enzymes. In biology, when you see something end in ASE, you might want to check as it's very possible that it's an enzyme. Enzymes have the ability to speed up reactions and build up or break down the items that they act upon. So here we go with the key players. Helicase, the unzipping enzyme. If you recall that DNA has two strands, you could think of helicase unzipping the two strands of DNA. Helicase doesn't have a hard time doing that. When unzipping, it breaks through the hydrogen bonds that hold the DNA bases together. DNA polymerase the builder. This enzyme replicates DNA molecules to actually build a new strand of DNA. Primase, the initializer. With as great as DNA polymerase is, DNA polymerase can't figure out where to get started without something called a primer. Primase makes the primer so that DNA polymerase can figure out where to go to start to work. You know what's kind of interesting about the primer it makes? The primer is actually made of RNA. Ligase, the gluer. It helps glue DNA fragments together. More about why you would need that later on. Now, don't feel overwhelmed. We'll go through the basics of this sequence in order. But remember, like all of our videos, we tend to give the big picture. There are always more details and exceptions to every biological process that we can't include in such a short video. DNA replication starts at a certain part called the origin. Usually this part is identified by certain DNA sequences. At the origin, helicase, the unzipping enzyme, comes in and unwinds the DNA. Here's the thing though, you don't want these strands to come back together. So SSB proteins, which stands for single-stranded binding proteins, bind to the DNA strands to keep them separated. And topoisomerase, I always have to slow down when I say that enzyme's name, keeps the DNA from supercoiling. Supercoiling might sound super, and it can be when you're trying to compact the DNA, but it's something that needs to be controlled during DNA replication. Supercoiling can involve an overwinding of the DNA, and you need the DNA strands to be separated for the next steps. Primase comes in and makes RNA primers on both strands. This is really important because otherwise DNA polymerase won't know where to start. In comes DNA polymerase. Okay, before we go on, remember how we said DNA has two strands? They're not identical, they complement each other. In our video that covers DNA structure, we talk about how the bases pair together with hydrogen bonds. The base adenine goes with the base thymine and the base guanine goes with the base cytosine. These strands are also anti-parallel, so they don't go in the same direction. What do we mean by direction? Well, with DNA, we don't say north or south. We say DNA either goes five prime to three prime, or three prime to five prime. What in the world does that mean? Well, the sugar of DNA is part of the backbone of DNA. It has carbons. The carbons on the sugar are numbered right after the oxygen in a clockwise direction. One prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, and five prime. 
the five prime carbon is actually outside of the spring structure. Now you do the same thing for the other side, but keep in mind DNA strands are anti-parallel to each other. So let's count these again clockwise after the oxygen. One prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, five prime. And the five prime is out of this ring. This strand on the left runs five prime to three prime. And the strand here on the right runs three prime to five prime. We'll explain why all that matters in a moment. So let's take that knowledge there and look at DNA replication here. In this image, I labeled the top original strand three prime to five prime. I labeled this bottom original strand five prime to three prime. That's the original DNA that is going to be replicated. DNA is unwinding here thanks to helicase. In this example, it will keep unwinding in this direction. Primase places primers. DNA polymerase is building the new strands. Now, the thing about DNA polymerase is when it's building a new strand, it can only build the new strand in the five prime to three prime direction, meaning it adds new bases to the three prime end on the new strand. See how it's being built in the five prime to three prime direction? This one is called the leading strand. But take a look down here. So DNA polymerase, once again, is building a new strand in the five prime to three prime direction. But there is a bit of a problem here. See, as DNA unwinds, because DNA polymerase can only build the new strand in the five prime to three prime direction, it has to keep racing up here next to where this unwinding is happening. You can see why then this new strand is known as the lagging strand. On this lagging strand, primers have to keep being placed in order for DNA polymerase to build. These fragments that result are known as Okazaki fragments. Primers have to get replaced with DNA bases since the primers were made of RNA. Ligase, the gluing enzyme, as I like to nickname it, has to take care of the gaps between Okazaki fragments, sealing them together. At the end of replicating, you have two identical double helix DNA molecules from your one original double helix DNA molecule. We call it semi-conservative because the two copies each contain one old original strand and one newly made one. One last thing, surely you've had to proofread your work before to catch errors. In this process, you don't want DNA polymerase to make errors. If it matches the wrong DNA basis, then you could have an incorrectly coded gene, which could ultimately end up in an incorrect protein or no protein. DNA polymerase is awesome. It has proofreading ability, meaning it rarely makes a mistake, which is a good thing. So remember how we said there is far more detail to this process to explore? The detailed understanding of DNA replication has led to some life-saving medical treatments that can stop DNA replication in harmful cells, including pathogenic bacteria or human cancer cells. We encourage you to explore beyond the basics Check out the further reading suggestions in the video details to explore more. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. Okay, so the animations are clearly super cute. I love the Amoeba Sisters. That's why I use them. Um, but... I'm going to go ahead and turn on my second camera so that we can take our notes. Sweet. So DNA replication notes. Well, like the Amoeba sisters mentioned, replication.
is the copying of DNA. Now, why would we need to copy DNA? Well, when our body is producing new cells, it needs to make sure that every cell that is made has a copy of your code. Now, every single cell in your body has a copy of your entire DNA. Not the entire code is activated, so stomach cells will take that part of the code that allows them to make enzymes that allow in digestion, and that's part of their function. Skin cells are not going to do the same. And that was also a part of the Amoeba Sisters video that we showed earlier this week. So, and that is called gene regulation, right? But regardless, if we are making new cells, those cells must have a copy or their own copy of the code. So we're going to make sure that we at least write that down. We are required to have a copy of DNA when we're making new cells. DNA is a double helix, meaning it's double stranded. Each strand is going to essentially be a template for us to continue to make copies. Now there's a couple of things that we need to recall from our understanding of previous units. All of the units in this course spiral into one another. It's not like we learn something and it's like, okay, we're never going to talk about this again. That's just not the case here in biology. The recall for this particular topic is going to be over biochemistry. Specifically, enzymes, and you know that most enzymes end in ACE. You know that the biomolecule that makes enzymes is the protein. You know that the elements and proteins are chon, and you know that all enzymes are known as catalysts, meaning they are agents that speed up the rate of a chemical reaction. Now, moving forward, any time that I write something that pertains to an enzyme, I'm going to put it in the color red. And the reason this is important, guys, is because this entire process is regulated by different enzymes. Now, another thing that I want to mention kind of before we get started, replication can be covered in three steps. So we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the three steps and I'll draw little pictures and I'll color code everything so that it's nice and easy for you to follow and understand. I want you to take note though. DNA runs
anti-parallel. Meaning one side is going in one direction and the other is going in the opposite. I also want you to note that we're going to refer to the five prime to three prime as our leading and the three prime to five prime as our lagging. And just as like our internet lags, the lagging strand is going to be slower when we're replicating and it takes a little bit more time. And at the end of our notes, when I talk about the Okazaki fragments, we'll kind of spiral that in and it'll all make sense. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys note this, this is important. All right, now let's get started on the first step of replication. The main goal of step one is to unwind the twisted ladder. So here's what we're going to do. We have our DNA. And we are going to uncoil it. And then we're going to start to break the steps. So the enzyme that's going to help us in this process, and again, I'm going to do the enzymes in red so that that way it's clear for you to follow what's going on in my notes because I know that they can get a little busy. The enzyme involved is called helicase. And this guy is essentially a zipper. What he does is he So in DNA structure, we said, okay, we have these nucleotides. The nucleotide is made up of three parts. We have a phosphate group, a nitrogen base, and a five carbon sugar. Now we also know that our nucleotides are gonna have complementary base pairs. A pairs with T, C pairs with G. Because DNA runs anti-parallel, I cannot have my bases line up perfectly and in the same direction. If you look at my thumbs, that's the flow of your direction. It has to run anti-parallel where one is going up and the other one is going down, if you will, so that my fingers match up perfectly like a puzzle piece, right? If they are running in the same direction, I now have this gap between my index fingers because we're not able to read DNA this way. It would never twist, compact, and fit into the nucleus. So these nitrogen bases, when they come together, they're held together by weak hydrogen bonds. Since we are essentially breaking our ladder, the helicase is going to come in and it's going to break all of these steps and they're called the rugs of a ladder. And what we end up with looks like this. This is our replication fork. And 
And again, because I'm sticking to this whole consistency with my enzymes and run. Helicase is going to unzip the DNA double helix. Now, one of the things that you must note about scientists is that they are very matter of fact. They don't sit there and get super creative with the names. They're super technical that way. So when we are looking at a sugar enzyme relationship, right? Uh, for example, the most common, we drink milk. Milk has lactose. That's the sugar found in milk. That's what makes it really sweet. If you are lactose intolerant, you are not able to break down the sugar within the milk, the lactose. You know it's a sugar because it ends in oats. So you are more prone to buying lactose-free milk. How in the heck are they going to go in and take all the sugar out of the milk? They cannot. So companies such as Lactaid that sells lactose-free milk, what they do is that they add the enzyme lactase into their milk. By doing so, the individual consuming the milk no longer has to worry about breaking down this sugar, this lactose that they are unable to. And so now it's broken down for them and you're not going to get all of those stomach issues and you're gonna be more prone to buying it, right? So it's just, that is how lactose-free milk works. So here, Remember, that was lactose and lactase. That was that relationship. The reason I tell you this is if I have a double helix, helicase is going to be the, um, the enzyme that breaks up my helix. Now you must note again, the location of this this is all taking place in the nucleus. That's our first step, that's step one. The enzyme that we've discussed here was helicase. Again, you know it's an enzyme because it ends in ACE. That's step one. Are we feeling okay? Hope so. Let's go ahead and let's get into step two then. Here we're going to be focusing on And you already know that your base pairs are apple, tree, car, garage. A goes with T, C goes with G. The enzymes First, what we're going to discuss is primase. This guy is literally the primer. Now for my girls, think about when you get your nails done. 
they put a base coat. They put the color, then they put a top coat. There's three steps. There's essentially three steps here and we're doing just that. Now, what I mean by this initiates DNA polymerase. It's the starting line. DNA polymerase is really good at what it does, which is pairing up nitrogen bases. I got an A, here's a T, boom, there's my pair. I got a C, here's my G, boom, there's a pair. It is a work mule. Like you tell it, hey, get to work, and it's just gonna do this pairing nonstop. The only problem is, is it doesn't know where to start. So what primase does, it's literally like when you, um, if you've ever had, or if you've ever gone with your parents to like discount tire, and they're like waving you out of the garage, and there's the guy telling you to come back, Primase is literally telling DNA polymerase, all right, come on, big guy, this way. We're moving in this direction. We're moving in this direction. And it's going and it's setting down everything that DNA polymerase is going to need to make the pairs. Because again, DNA polymerase just wants to get to work. It is really good at what it does. It's not necessarily really smart. So it needs that guidance of like, come on, you're doing a good job. Keep going this way, right? And that's how we're going to think of primase. Now, obviously I've mentioned DNA polymerase, so we got to write that guy down somewhere. He is our builder. Now, if I gave you a paragraph to read, you guys are proficient in your reading abilities now, okay? You're in ninth grade, you know how to read. If I give you one of the books that my four-year-old brings home, you'd be like, the ball is red. Okay, there's not a whole lot there, you can read. If I then gave you a paragraph and I had you read from right to left, that is not the way our brain works. That is not how we've been programmed. Could you probably decode the sentence? Absolutely. Would it take you a little bit more time? Yes, a thousand percent. So the one thing that you have to acknowledge about DNA polymerase is this. He only knows how to read from a five prime to a three prime direction. Okay, so I've discussed the two enzymes. Are we ready to get into what like step two actually does? And again, I'm going to post this in the Schoology folder for my kids. It's already there. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, you're like, eh, I didn't get it. It's fine. We need to move on. So step two. What we have are these we have these free floating nucleotides that bind Bethany move. <laughs> I know we're like there it goes. I think it saw you. <laughs> so free floating nucleotides are going to bind with the complementary
basis on our Now I'm going to draw my free floating nucleotides in purple so you are able to identify them in my drawing. Here's the deal. If you've split, if you've ever played sports in some capacity, you know that there's your starters and then there's your bench. That's it, right? So these guys are my bench. My free floating nucleotides are literally waiting for the starters to put so many points up on the scoreboard that they get pulled or waiting for the starters to get injured or get tired so that they have their opportunity to go and shine and prove themselves, all right? So DNA primase, here we go, right? Leading DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is reading from five to three. If it's season A, it's going to go pull a T that is free floating in the nucleus, attach it, make a pair, move on to the next. So to give you a visual of this, here's what I am now working with. Remember, we had the original, we've split it in half. So this is what we ended up with. We now have these two strands. These are the old slash parent strands is what they're referred to. In my bench, it's just waiting for the opportunity to get in. And so again, I drew them in purple so that you know that those are the free floating nucleotides that are found in the nucleus. Since now there is a vacancy, there's an availability on the starting roster, right? This guy is going to jump to his opportunity and pair up with that A. This guy is going to do the same. So on and so forth. And what I've essentially created is a new daughter strand. Are these two identical? A, A, T, T, good. T, T, A, A, good. C, C, G, G, good. G, G, C, C. These two are identical to one another. Are the colors switched? Yes. But it doesn't matter if I give you the left side or if I give you the right side, because A always pairs with T, you're always going to get the same result. That was step two. Are we feeling okay still? Because we're going into our final step here. Step three is the proof reading step. This is like right before you submit your test and you go through every question just to make sure you answered it and that you know that you got them right. We put our base coat, we put our color. Now we're gonna look at it and make sure it looks okay before we put our top coat on, okay? The enzyme that we are working with here, again, it's an enzyme so I'm gonna Right and red. Is ligase. It's the glue.
this guy is sealing it all off, making sure that we're bond and we're good to go. DNA polymerase. is going to check for errors. So here's what I've come up with. This idea is referred to as semi-conservative. And what that means is I have one new strand and one old strand and the end result is because these two are exactly the same the colors are just switched so that is why we describe it to be semi-conservative. All right, this is the last little bit. <laughs> Let's see here. Okazaki fragments. Since DNA polymerase can only read DNA, from a five prime to a three prime, the lagging strand, which is your three to five, Now, again, think if I was to give you a paragraph and you have to read it from right to left, you're going to probably chunk it up and then put it all together so that it makes sense. This is exactly what DNA polymerase does when it is coding for the lagging strand. Does it get it done? Yes. Does it take it a little bit longer? Yes, but that's okay. Now, ligase. is going to
ligase is going to fill in those blanks that we have. Now there's just one little thing I want to draw and I'll send you on your way. You'll use these notes to answer your replication activity that is in Schoology. Uh, for Mr. Johnson's kids, I can't remember if I've already launched it or not, but it will be launched as soon as I get done here, if it hasn't been launched already. For my kids, it's already in Schoology. Here is what we have essentially created in DNA replication. Now bear with me because this is kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> There was our double helix. And at the end of replication, here's what we have created. We have created two identical copies, one template strand, which is your old, the new one that was made from my free floating nucleotides, which is new, identical nonetheless. How 